EIP-4844 is the Ethereum improvement proposal that implements proto-dink sharding. This upgrade on the Ethereum network could reduce transaction costs on layer twos by an order of magnitude. There will be some big changes to Ethereum as part of this EIP, but it can be hard to understand what upgrades are actually being made without getting lost in all of the technical jargon. By the time you finish this video, you'll understand the motivation behind EIP-4844, the major changes that will be implemented, and how this can reduce gas fees on Ethereum by an order of magnitude. You'll even learn why this upgrade is called proto-dink sharding when there's actually no sharding happening at all. The idea of implementing some kind of sharding in Ethereum has been around since 2016 which is a long time in crypto years. Even back then, people were worried about Ethereum's rising transaction fees and its ability, or lack thereof, to scale to 1 billion users. People are throwing around the word sharding a lot. So let's actually define it. In computer science, sharding involves splitting something, usually a database, to be stored across multiple resources or computers. Ethereum can be thought of as a mega computer split across a bunch of smaller computers or nodes. But there is a catch. Instead of data and computation being split across all of these nodes, every single node needs to store the entire Ethereum transaction history and execute every single line of code that runs through Ethereum. So every time that new data is stored in an Ethereum transaction, it's actually being stored thousands of times over across all of these nodes. Obviously, this is extremely inefficient and it makes the cost of storing data on Ethereum much more expensive than it needs to be. One solution that has been used to combat these problems are layer two networks like Arbitrum and Optimism. These networks are built on top of Ethereum but still hold many of the same security guarantees as Ethereum. In order to have some of these security guarantees, these networks are using storage on the actual Ethereum network. But because storing data on Ethereum is expensive for the reasons that we discussed, over 90% of the total transaction fees on layer twos go to storing data on Ethereum mainnet. Layer two transactions are working right now in the sense that they're much cheaper than layer one or Ethereum transactions, but they're not as cheap as we want them to be. If we use sharding on Ethereum to more efficiently store that data, we could reduce fees by an order of magnitude. The main proposal for sharding on Ethereum is called dank sharding, which is named after the author Dankrad Feist. In order to shift data storage on Ethereum to sharding, a lot of complicated upgrades would need to be made. Doing a lot of complicated upgrades at the same time increases the chances that something will break. That's where EIP-4844 and Proto-Dink sharding come in. Proto-Dink sharding, which is named after its author, Proto, implements a lot of the changes that we need for Dink sharding without actually implementing the sharding part. This is a way to make progress towards full dink sharding without actually having to do all the complicated things at the same time. The awesome part is that implementing proto dink sharding will still reduce the transaction fees on layer two networks by an order of magnitude. So how is this actually possible? EIP-4844 adds a new type of persistent memory called a blob to the Ethereum network. As we mentioned before, the current type of persistent Ethereum data, which is called call data, is expensive because it's stored on every single node and that it's stored forever. This new type of memory would have an expiration date where it would automatically be deleted. The exact expiration date hasn't exactly been decided, but it would probably be anywhere between 30 days to a few months. The other unique thing about this data is that unlike call data, it would not be available in the EVM. Instead, it would only exist on nodes in the consensus layer instead of the execution layer. In plain English, this means that if you wanted to write an on-chain Ethereum program in a smart contract, that uses data from within a specific blob, you would not be able to, at least not directly. In order to handle these blobs of data, EIP-4844 is introducing a new transaction type called a blob carrying transaction. On chain, these blob carrying transactions will have a hash of a KZG commitment which is an identifier to the blob. We'll get more to those later. This transaction passes through Ethereum consensus just like a normal transaction, except that it has a sidecar with a blob data attached. So basically, whenever an Ethereum node sees one of these blob carrying transactions, 
it knows that it will have to do some extra work with the blob that's attached to the transaction. Just like call data, right now these blobs will still be stored on every single node. This data storage still takes up resources, so it needs to be paid for somehow. But this blob data doesn't necessarily fit into the current Ethereum fee market. This is why EIP 4844 introduces a new multi-dimensional fee market. Basically, in addition to the current fee market, there will be a new fee market specifically for these data blobs. This additional fee market will still follow the same structure used with EIP-1559. The fees for storing these blobs is charged in gas, but the actual gas price will adjust up and down to target a certain number of blobs per block. So right now we have one fee market for on-chain data and execution. And after this EIP, we'll have two fee markets, which includes the additional off-chain blob data. But this is the first step, and this EIP sets the stage for potentially more fee markets in the future. Before, I mentioned that these blob transactions carry something called a KZG commitment. Actually, they're carrying a hash of a KZG commitment. But if you're not familiar with KZG commitments themselves, they can be thought of as a hash of the blob data. Talking about KZG commitments can start to get a little bit complicated. But the important thing to note is that we don't actually need to use a KZG commitment for this upgrade. We could just use a normal data hash, but we will need to use KZG commitments when we implement dank sharding in the future. This is why EIP 4844 is using a KZG commitment instead of something simpler. One interesting quirk about KZG commitments is that they require something called a trusted setup ceremony. Basically, because of all the complex cryptography stuff that's going on under the hood, we need to create a master lock and then throw away the key. This will be done in a public and communal process before EIP 4844 is launched. And it's likely that anybody will be able to participate through their browser. The security of these KZG commitments is dependent on at least one participant in this ceremony to be honest. Because the ceremony will be open to the public, it means that you can be the one honest actor that holds on security for the entire Ethereum network. Once EIP 4844 is implemented and transaction fees fall by an order of magnitude, a lot more applications will be enabled. Blockchain gaming, blockchain social networks, and even transaction fees in more economically disadvantaged countries will all start to become more possible. It will be a huge step on the path to 1 billion users. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.